Hey everybody, welcome to Northwoods Engineered. Today I'm going to be showing you how I built my chainsaw mill. It's something I've wanted to build for a while and I finally got a bunch of logs that had been cut down for some road construction at my house and it uh, kind of gave me the, the reason to build it. So uh, I've been using it for a few weeks. I've cut up a few logs with it so far and have been pretty happy with it. Uh, as you can see, the, the main frame that holds the saw is built out of three quarter inch conduit. Uh, I wasn't able to do any welding for this build. I don't have a welder at my house and that's where I was working on this at. So I use conduit along with maker pipe connectors. Uh, maker pipe makes a whole bunch of different types of connectors that you can use to build things out of conduit. Um, they're really cool, really useful, and it's nice because uh, nothing's permanent. So if you, if you want to change something, uh, it's easily done. So I used it for the frame, I used it for the log clamp holders, which you'll see later, uh, and everything worked out really well. Also, bought a, quite a few things off Amazon. Uh, I'll have links for that in the description, uh, along with the Maker Pipe link as well, so check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or shoot me an email. Uh, my email is listed in my about page. And uh, yeah, keep watching. Uh, I'll go through how I built everything from the base to the saw carriage. And I'll show myself cutting up a log at the end. So thanks for watching. Uh, also hit the subscribe button uh, if you want to get notifications on my future videos. Okay, so this is where I started building the sawmill was with the base pieces. The idea was that I wanted to have something that could easily be taken apart and moved. Uh, I'm going to be setting this up originally at my house, but I want to be able to take it apart fairly quickly and bring it up to my cabin as well because I have logs up there that I want to want to cut up as well. So I uh, started with just a piece of 4x4 four four treated, and then I took a 2x8 treated and bolted it onto the back side of that four by four. And then as you can see, cut an angle for loading the logs. So this will be right along the ground and you'll be able to roll the logs right up on top. Initially, I didn't have this two by four. The logs are sitting right here, but it wasn't high enough up for my to get the full cut. Um, you'll kind of see that later. The saw won't go low enough. So I added another board on top just to get the logs up a little bit higher. So then these parts also have uh, what will hold the logs together. So on the base, I just bolted two 90 degree angle brackets on here with some leg screws. And then I have this piece of conduit pipe here and I have uh, three eighths inserts pounded into each end. So you take that and that'll bolt right in there. And then to hold the log, I made these clamps and I used the maker pipe, just the T connectors. So on the one side, it's just a T connector with a short piece and then I just put a leg screw through there. So that'll be the side that the log just goes up against and you can just loosen it as needed, rotate it to wherever you need, slide it back and forth and then tighten it back up. And then on this side, I wanted to have some sort of crank. So what I did was I took a little short piece of conduit. In one side, I pounded in an insert, a threaded insert. The other side is just a, a cap, um, like a pipe plug. And I drilled a hole through there. And then I took a paste piece of 3 8 inch threaded rod. I ground down it a point on one end, and then I bought these handles that thread on and then just two nuts to hold it. So basically created a crank handle. So you take that and then one of the T connectors goes around it like that. And then, so you can Depending upon how big the log is, slide it back and forth like that. And then when you have it where you want it, the 
the top one you'd leave you'd leave tight the whole time. Just have to loosen up that bottom one. Oops. And then when you push it up against the log, you can use the handle to tighten it up and hold it in place. So next I'll show you guys how I put these together on the base on the ground. So there's the giant pile of logs that uh, kind of spurred me to make the sawmill. I've always wanted to do it, but having these cut down due to some road construction uh, really gave me the, the reason to make it. So I picked a spot nice and close to that pile. So I don't have to move the logs too far. And first thing I did was I uh, leveled out the ground um, in the two spots where I have those four by fours right there. So then I then I built the base just out of those eight foot four by fours and then a couple three two by fours spanning across. So starting with a nice level base and then kind of filling in dirt around it. So hopefully it won't move too much. Uh, long term, it'd be nice to pour some concrete pads, but for now, this will have to do. And then after that base, I can start assembling the three base pieces so that'll be next okay so i've got all three base pieces laid out on the four by fours uh, as you can see they're not all equally spaced uh, they used to be the reason i had to move this back one up a little bit you'll kind of see it once i have it all set up and i'm cutting but i needed that so i could clamp the end of the log properly i, I couldn't get it far enough out so i moved that one in right now they're they're literally just sitting here so the next step is to take pieces of unistrut. So that's what I'm using, just standard unistrut. I'm gonna use that as the rails to push the saw carriage along on. So you set those and come over here. You can see that I put these T-nuts. So these are just a 3 8 T-nut like this and they just pound into the wood. I, I could use, you could just use screws and washers to hold this down, but once again, along the themes of portability, um, I did this to you, so you're not constantly screwing screws in. And then it just bolts down with a with a uh, little bolt. Heads up, Kitsch. Should get those lined up. Go along and insert all the screws in. And then I also added on a couple brackets over here on this side, just some small little framing brackets. So I'll screw those down to the base to give it some more strength as well. So once you get everything uh, bolted on and screwed down, it'll be ready to add the log and add the saw carriage. So that'll be next. Okay, so now I will show you how I built the saw carriage. Uh, it's built out of conduit for the most part. Um, it's got two, piece, two main pieces here that I just put a bend in. It's like a 60 degree bend. And those run uh, from the top all the way out to the end. And then I got these wheels off of Amazon. Uh, they've got like a V notch in them. So those will ride right along the edge of the Unistrut. And I just drilled holes right through the conduit. Uh, you can see a few extra holes, that's just because it's it's kind of tough to get holes straight through conduit without a fixture, so I screwed up a couple times, but that's why those are there. And then a couple vertical pieces all connected. Well, these two vertical pieces are connected with a 90 degree maker pipe connector, and then you've got a horizontal on the bottom as well. Those pieces go up, and then a couple um, angled pieces just connected with the T connectors uh, to give the, the vertical portion some strength. And then the part that the saw holder is gonna ride on is these rails. And I got these off Amazon and it came with the rails and then it came with uh, the little slider pieces. So you'll see those are bolted to the back of the saw carrier. And these are used in like CNC machines. So that's uh, what the saw will ride up and down against. And then I added one piece going from the, the back to the front just to give it a little extra strength. 
And then I've got this uh, throttle cable. It's like a motorcycle uh, brake handle, basically, connected to the back here. And that'll run the saw. So the saw holder, uh, I just made it out of a couple pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood. Um, it's got uh, one flat bottom piece and then a, a vertical piece here. Uh, these are mounted on the back, so there's four of them. They'll be mounted on the back like that. And then I've got uh, a lead screw. So these are used in CNC machines a lot as well. Lead screw and acne rod, they're also called. And then a special nut that you'll see it when I put it together, but that, that's how it rides up and down this rod. So that's in there as well. And then these pieces are just for some strength. Same with these brackets. And then the way I have it to hold the saw on is I got this, this used to be a 90 degree, uh, pretty thick, probably quarter inch piece of steel. I cut it off and I drilled two holes in it so the saw will mount through there. And then I wanted a way to level out the saw because uh, once you put it on there, there's no way that it's going to be level. So what I did was I took quarter inch T-nuts and I pounded four of those in. And then on the bottom, I just have a quarter inch bolts with some jam nuts. So when you put this together, it sits like that. And then the saw will be on there. Um, you'll see that later. And then you put a level on your saw blade and you can adjust it um, in multiple directions. And then the saw, so I needed a way to, to run the throttle. So I built this, which uh, it's ex extremely prototypey right now. It's not very uh, polished, but it works. Um, so what that does is you have to hold down this part of your saw and then pull the trigger. So it slides together like this, kind of goes together like that. And it'll slide over this trigger, hold that down, and then I've got a handle. Clamp that down tight, and then that throttle cable will attach here, and then you actuate the handle to run the saw. And then to connect the saw to the saw carrier, I've got these adapters. So these are female to male adapters. And you just take off the two nuts that hold the chain or the bar. Normally, you take those off. And it's an M8. For steels, it's an M8 uh, female end. And then I go to a 3 8 inch uh, male threaded end. And those will go through this black plate here. And these I got off uh, McMaster car, so I can put a link, put a link on that below as well. I'll throw the saw holder on there. Just fits top of the rods. And grab the lead screw. And that, you just thread it down there. And then I just have a two by four on the bottom with a hole in it for it to sit into. And then I just have a piece of wood, another piece of plywood like that. Nothing special. And then you can use a drill, chuck it up, goes up and down like that. And then the last thing I added, the first time I used it, I didn't have any way to actually hold the saw carry and it vibrated and the saw kept dropping and I didn't even realize it. But I've got this clamp, it's for camera gear, I think. Um, but it happens to fit 
really well around this piece of conduit. And then that'll help hold the, the sock carrier in place when you get it to the spot where you want it to cut. So that's it. So next we'll take it out and put it on the sawmill and put the saw in and cut up a log. All right, so I'll show you how I secure the log on here. Uh, obviously this one I've, I've already cut uh, two sides off of, but it would be the same. Uh, this was like probably a 12 inch diameter on the one end, eight feet long. <clears throat> and the nice thing about the way I have the base set up is with these ramps on the ground, it's really easy. I just push the log up on my own. Um, I don't have to lift it with anything. I don't have any large equipment to help lift. So it's nice having it low on the ground. And then on the back side here, I have the pieces uh, holding on with the maker pipe and just those uh, leg screws. So I'll just push, push the log up against those like that. And then these front ones here, I loosen up the maker pipe pieces and you can slide it back and forth as needed. So slide it up against it, making sure I'm lower than where I'm gonna make the next cut. And then tighten it up. And then crank that tight. So I'll do that in all three spots. And like that keeps it pretty solid. So I've got the the carriage on the track on the unistrut, and then I'll, the next step will take the saw and attach it. So I'm using a steel MS391. I've got a 25 inch bar on it, and I've got a Granberg. A ripping saw chain on it. So it goes in like that. So here's where that leveling plate comes into play. So I've made sure that the unistrut rails that this is sliding on are level both that way and this way so x and y and then i take a little level like this and i'll check the level of the saw itself so if it's if it's off like this way it's not that big of a deal but you don't want it the direction you're pushing you don't want it off too much so uh, the jam screws here on the bottom we can adjust you don't move that plate up and down as needed. So it needs to go a little bit that way. So you turn those up. That's pretty good that way. And then left to right, it's actually pretty good right now. And then I just tighten the two bolts that are holding the base down. Okay. So after I've got the saw on, I can lower it down. 
to where I'm going to cut it. I'll do about an inch and a half slab. And then I've got this clamp over here on the front that uh, will tighten against the conduit. And then for extra measure, I can also put a, a vice grip down on the bottom of the rail just to make sure the sled doesn't move. There's just so much vibration. It's easy for it to kind of fall down. And then I'll take the throttle cable that I have and I'll hook that onto the throttle mechanism that I made. Like that. And then we're ready to cut as long as you have the right, right adjustment for the slab that you're gonna cut.
So there you go. Uh, cut a nice one and a half inch slab out of that uh, piece of red oak. Um, that's basically what that whole pile is right there, is red oak. Uh, if I was to take this thing up to my cabin, which I plan on doing, I'd be mostly cutting pine, so it, it would cut a lot quicker. Um, as you saw, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but uh, it takes a couple minutes to get through that. It's almost 12 inches wide at the, at the back part, but it, it did a real nice job. Fairly smooth cut, and then obviously if I'm gonna use it for any fine woodworking, I'll use a planer at some point. Um, overall impressions of the sawmill, pretty happy with it. This is the second log I've cut up, so uh, a lot of time for things to fail, obviously, but uh, nothing's really failed so far. I've had to make some adjustments. Um, changed up a little bit on how the, the holders, the log holders work. Um, these maker pipe connectors, they come with like a piece of plastic to, to make the grip tight when you tighten them down. I took that off on one of the sides so that when you loosen it, you can slide it. Um, taking them both off, it was too loose, and having them both on, it was too tight to slide. So that was one adjustment I made. Um, the sock carriage uh, can get to vibrating pretty bad. Sometimes you really gotta just slow down and, and push down kind of hard on the, on the handle back here. Uh, I think that adding some weight on the front might help. I could just put a board across there and add some weight and uh, that would probably help out. Um, I also, I can't go too much lower than what I have right now, just the way I designed everything. Um, so I, I gotta kind of fix that. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. So we'll see uh, how many more of these logs I can get through. Obviously I'm limited on my bar length. That's the biggest bar I can get for that saw. Um, also, that saw does have an adjustable oil rate, and I have that all the way up. And then uh, after you do a cut, you leave it idle for a little while just to let it cool down a bit. But yeah, it's been pretty good. So thanks for watching the video. Hopefully uh, it can inspire you a little bit if you're working on something similar. Uh, remember that all the products that I use, or most of them that I use, are linked down below. Um, with Amazon links, if that's where I got them from, or the link to Maker Pipe is down there. Feel free to shoot me an email. It's in the About page of my channel uh, if, if you have questions. Um, yeah, hope you have a good day and good luck with all your projects.